graphing rational functions, this is the second day. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. First things first, we want to go ahead and factor and simplify. So this becomes, we can factor out a greatest common factor of x in the numerator. So x times x minus 1 over x plus 1, so that doesn't simplify at all. Looking at the original problem denominator, that's going to help us um, determine what makes our denominator equal to 0. So we get x equals negative 1. So we need to figure out, is that a whole or a vertical asymptote? So because nothing crossed out, I know that when I plug in negative 1 into this function, it's going to make my denominator 0. Um, and so therefore, I know it's going to be a vertical asymptote. But again, if you need to plug that in, f of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 times negative 1 minus 1 divided by negative 1 plus 1. And so when you do that, you get negative 1. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2 over 0. And so that gives us, again, 2 over 0, which we cannot have because that is not allowed. We can't divide by 0. So that means this is a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. That means there are no holes. So on my graph, I can use my ruler to go ahead and graph my asymptote at x equals negative 1. And then um, for my horizontal asymptote, remember it's the degree of the numerator over the degree of the denominator, looking at it in um, standard form. So these are in standard form for the original problem. So this is a degree 2 over degree 1. So that means the numerator degree is bigger than the denominator degree. Remember when we said that happens, there is no horizontal asymptote. Instead, there's an other asymptote. In this case, we're only going to be looking at slant. So how do I find the slant asymptote? I have to use synthetic or long division. So slant asymptote, which I usually just write as A. So to find, use long division or synthetic division. So remember for synthetic division, you look at the denominator for the number that goes in the box. So we know that that would be negative 1. And then the numerator is going to be the other values that you put the coefficient. So 1, negative 1. And remember, you also need the 0 placeholder. So because we have x squared minus x and no constant, you do need that 0 placeholder right there. Remember, for synthetic division, you are adding. You bring down the first term. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Add these two numbers together. Negative 2 times negative 1 gives me 2. And add these numbers together. So. This is going to be y equals x minus 2 and then plus 2 over x plus 1. Now, when we're writing our slant asymptote out, you do not need to include the remainder because it's so small that it's not going to make a difference on our graph. So when we write the slant asymptote, we actually just write y equals x minus 2. And so that is a line. We know how to graph lines. We have our y-intercept at negative 2, and our slope is 1. So we're just going to go up 1 over 1. And then, of course, you can get your ruler and go ahead and graph that line. Okay, so now we have our slant asymptote on our graph. So again, that was the y equals x minus 2. You don't need to include the remainder. We can also write our domain. Domains, all values except for vertical asymptotes are holes. So negative infinity to negative 1, union negative 1 to infinity. And then the x-intercept, remember, we are going to set the equation equal to 0 and solve. And so we said it was the zeros of the numerator when we do that. So we're really solving for the zeros in the numerator as long as they're not zeros in the denominator. So we have an x equals 0 and x minus 1 equals 0. So this gives us x equals 1. So our x-intercepts are at 0, 0, because x equals 0, and also at 1, 0. To find the y-intercept, you plug 0 in for x and solve, as we said yesterday. So when I do that, I get 0 squared minus 0 over 0 plus 1. You can also use your simplified answer 
or the factored form, that's fine too. So we get 0 over 1. Unlike up here, where we can't have 0 in the denominator, 0 in the numerator is OK. So that's just equal to 0. So again, that makes sense, because if we have an x-intercept of 0, 0, then our y-intercept should be 0, 0. And now we can go ahead and start to graph this. So for my graph, I'm going to go ahead and start with my x-intercepts, 0, 0, and 1, 0. And so that tells me I'm in this upper region on the right side of my vertical asymptote, because remember you have to graph to the left of the vertical asymptote and to the right. And so then all I have to do is follow my asymptotes, and that means that this is going to curve around following the slant asymptote, so it would look something like that. Now, on the other side, I need to figure out where my graph is going to be. Is it going to be in this upper region, or is it going to be in this lower region? And so that's when we can create a sine line to help us, like we did the other day. And so we're looking at to the left and the right of negative 1. We already found where this was, so we just need to figure out where we are to the left of negative 1. So for this, I can plug in the value of f of negative 2 into my equation. You can use your factored form, or you can use your original equation. I'm just going to go ahead and use the original. So we have negative 2 squared minus negative 2 divided by negative 2 plus 1. The reason I like to use the original is just in case we made a mistake when we were um, simplifying. So negative 2 squared we know is 4, minus minus becomes plus 2, and negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, and so that gives us 6 over negative 1, so negative 6. So that tells me I have the point negative 2, negative 6, and if you were to plot that, you would see that you're going to be in this lower region. So that means my graph is going to go down this way and come around. Now, really I didn't need to use a sine line here, um, and the reason I didn't need to is because, look at your x-intercepts. Your x-intercepts are 0, 0, and 1, 0. We did not have any other x-intercepts, and if I was on this side of my graph, I would have to have another x-intercept because I follow along my asymptotes and it would cross through the x-axis right there if I did that. So that's another way you can tell. And for your end behavior, well, notice that your ends of your graph, as your x gets large, so as your x values go this way, your y values, notice, are going up to infinity. So as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches infinity. And as x goes towards negative infinity, your y values are going down towards negative infinity. So we also learned, remember, when we talked about polynomials, the end behavior. So if you wanted to, you could use that to help you by looking at your slant asymptote. So this is odd because the degree of this is odd, first power, and the leading coefficient is positive. So remember, odd positive means the left end goes down and the right end goes up. And so, again, that's another way you could have said the end behavior. So negative infinity goes towards negative infinity, positive infinity goes towards positive infinity. And again, so we are graphing this without our calculator, but we can use our graphing calculator to check our work. So if I turn my calculator on, um, I'm going to make sure my numerator and denominator are in parentheses. I also am going to graph my slant asymptote just so you all can see what's happening on the graph. So if I hit graph for this, here is the graph. And then this is my slant asymptote. So you can see in the long run, it is following your slant asymptote. If I hit zoom out, hit enter. There's the graph again. So you can see it's just following along. So the asymptote for vertical was right here, and then the ends of our graph just follow along the slant asymptote. So that is it for this problem. Let's go ahead and look at the next one. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do this problem on your own. When you're done with the problem, go ahead and unpause and check your work. So just like all the other problems, first thing we want to do is factor the numerator. So that factors into factors of negative 2 that add up to negative 1. So x minus 2 times x plus 1 over x minus 1. And then, of course, you would simplify, which this does not simplify. In our denominator, we have x minus 1. We set that equal to 0 and solve and get x equals 1. I know this is going to be a vertical asymptote because nothing simplified out, but if it helps you to plug it in to figure that out, that's fine too, and you would see that it still makes your denominator 0. So we have vertical asymptote at x equals 1. That means there's no holes.
for the graph, then we can go ahead and graph our vertical asymptote at x equals 1. And then let's go ahead and look at the horizontal asymptote. The degree of the numerator is 2 over degree of 1. So the numerator degree is bigger than denominator degree, which means there is no horizontal asymptote. So that means there is, in this case, again, a slant asymptote. And to find, we need to use synthetic division or long division. So um, you can use either. Synthetic division is, remember, only when you're dividing by a linear binomial. So this is a linear binomial. Linear because it's degree 1. Binomial, there's only two terms. So the 0 of the denominator is, again, in this case, 1, unlike the last problem was negative 1. So when I put 1 in the box, then I use the coefficients of the numerator, 1, negative 1, negative 2. This time I wasn't missing a 0 placeholder. So I bring down the 1, 1 times 1 is 1, add these together to get 0, 0 times 1 is 0, so my remainder is 2. So y equals x, we don't need to write plus 0, but you can if you want to, so x plus 0 minus 2 divided by x minus 1. And remember the remainder is so small, we don't actually use that for our slant asymptote, so we can just write y equals x. So now I have my slant asymptote, I can go ahead and graph. On my graph for my slant asymptote, we have a y-intercept of 0 because it's x plus 0, and the slope is 1. So that means my graph is going to go like this. So we can get our ruler out and go ahead and graph that. You should always make your lines go all the way across your graph when you are graphing. So now we have our slant asymptote y equals x and our vertical asymptote x equals 1. Now I can go ahead and start to look at the other features, my x-intercept. So if I want to find my x-intercept, remember it's the zeros in the numerator as long as they are not zeros in your denominator. So 0 equals x minus 2. I always use, again, the simplified answer when I'm finding the zeros of the numerator. That way you don't have to worry about the holes. So when I solve this, I get, I add the 2, so 2 is equal to x over here, subtract the 1, negative 1 is equal to x. So my x-intercepts are 2, 0, and negative 1, 0. So I can go ahead and put those on my graph. So we have 2, 0, and negative 1, 0. My y-intercept I find by setting 0 in for x, so 0 squared minus 0 minus 2 divided by 0 minus 1. So when I do that, in my numerator I get negative 2, in my denominator negative 1, so that's equal to 2. So I have a y-intercept of 0 comma 2, so I can plot that. And now we can go ahead and start to graph. Um, now this one's a nicer graph because we have points on either side of my vertical asymptote, so I don't have to actually plug stuff in. So since this point on this part of the asymptote is on this region, I'm just following along my asymptotes. And same thing on this side. So on the left of the vertical asymptote, we have our two points here. So we just go through those two points and then follow along our asymptotes. The domain is all real numbers except for 1, so negative infinity to 1, and then 1 to infinity. And then our end behavior is following us our slant asymptotes. This is odd, positive, just like the last one, so left end goes down, right end goes up. So as we approach negative infinity, notice our y values go towards negative infinity. As we approach positive infinity, our y values are going towards positive infinity. Now I didn't mention this on the other graph, but you don't need to worry about this part of our graph right here because that's not the end behavior. That's just the behavior as x is approaching 1 from the left and the right. We're looking at the end behavior, which means in the long run, as you get very large values of x, very large values of x are going towards the right of my graph, which is this end, and very large negative values of x go towards the left side of my graph here, 
towards negative infinity. So um, don't get confused with the vertical asymptote. That is not the ends of your graph. That just is what's happening around the vertical asymptote at, at x value of 1. And that is it for um, our slant asymptotes.